Dear friends, it is my honor and privilege to introduce our keynote speaker tonight, Ruth Weiss. Ruth Weiss is the Martin Peretz Professor of Yiddish Literature and Professor of Comparative Literature at Harvard University. In 2007, Professor Weiss was awarded the National Humanities Medal by President Bush for her scholarship and teaching that have eliminated Jewish literary traditions. Professor Weiss is one of the most prominent Jewish intellectuals of our time. The ambassador of Israel to the United States, historian and writer Michael Oren, wrote about Ruth Weiss in his praise for her book, Jews and Power. In an era of deepening political and moral confusion, Ruth Weiss supplies a voice that is both clarion and courageous. Her call to Jews is to understand the limits of politics of accommodation, to be brave, to face a hostile world, to take responsibility, and to lead. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Professor Ruth Weiss. I am very humbled to be here. My feeling is very much that the future of American, of this community, I had come here with my husband from Montreal, and to tell you the honest truth, we were terribly disappointed in the Boston Jewish community. We were disappointed in its fire. We, were, we, we come from a community where there was a tremendous amount of energy, fundraising. Um, this community seemed to us a little bit slow to protest wrongs and to stand up for right. And the people who were doing it, in fact, very early on, were the Russian Jews who had just come. So my heart and soul were behind those remarks, and I think that this evening's event really substantiates all that I felt then. Um, of course, it's not just the fact that the Russian Jews represent the biggest immigration of Jews to America since the Second World War. That in itself is a very important fact. Um, and numbers count, but numbers are not everything. It's also what comes with those numbers. I know a young man who is from the former Soviet Union, who is in his early 30s, and he said to me, I really, I really feel sorry for my younger brother. I grew up in the Soviet Union when it was the Soviet Union, and he did not, and I know the value of certain things, such as political freedom. I know the value of Israel. I know the value of my Jewishness in a way that he never will because it came to him so naturally. And so I think that this is something that you do bring to our midst. It's this conviction that we heard spoken about here, that one owes something because one knows its value. And this is something that I think you still have to communicate to the rest of American Jewry and to America at large. And here's the paradox. In this country, freedom of speech and freedom of association are protected by the law. And Jews increasingly are using those freedoms to attack their fellow Jews and to attack the state of Israel. This is a, um, a horrifying phenomenon, and in fact, it is quite different from all other minorities in this country. Why does this happen? Why is it that the Jews are exceptional in this regard? I think the answer is very simple, all too simple. It happens because no other people is under attack to the same degree. It is the particular fate of the Jews, the strange fate of the Jews, to be attacked by the worst regimes, by the worst rulers, by the most anti-liberal, by the most anti-humanist rulers in the world. This assault that comes against the Jews in our time, particularly from Arab regimes and from Arab Muslim coalitions, is something that really pushes Jews on the defensive and makes many people uh, extremely 
apologetic, makes many people extremely nervous. It is very hard to maintain one's moral confidence in the face of people who are always accusing you. This attack on the Jews has nothing to do with the nature of the Jews. It has to do with the nature of the enemy that needs the Jews as the coalescing force. What is the single unifying element of the Arab world since 1945? Only one thing, opposition to Israel. And I am afraid to say that if they are not going to give up that political tool very quickly. And I'll go back to how I began. There is no Jewish community anywhere that really embodies these truths as much as you do. And so I really thank you for the honor of having come here to speak to you about it.